Hello, hello, hello. Today we're talking about degassing. Now, the whole point of degassing is when you're when you're making a brew, and that could be a wash, wine, beer, or anything like that. Uh, you've got yeast and you've got food in there, and what it's doing is it's converting the the food, the sugar, uh, into uh, alcohol, uh, and it also, as a byproduct, makes a lot of CO2. Now, the CO2 can be very small little bubbles which stay in suspension. Um, they will then collect with other uh, COT bubbles, which will make it larger and lighter, and eventually they get so big they'll raise the top. Um, and that's why you get obviously the, the bubbles in the foam. Now, once your wash finishes, um, there will be some bubble still of CO2 in the washing suspension, just like the yeast itself, uh, and it will just sit there. Now, for things like beers, ciders, and ales, uh, that's a good thing because you, you've still also got used yeast there. And you'll need that in your second fermentation to actually create the gas. For a wine, you definitely don't want that because the last thing you want to do is then bottling your wine and then suddenly bottles start exploding or cork shooting off everywhere because there is still active CO2 inside your bottle. So you need to uh, degas it to, to get rid of everything and then clear it all off. With a wash, this is the thing. There is no... There's lots of wrong answers to a degree, but there's no right answer. Some people will degas a wash, others won't. Uh, now, why would you want to 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 degas a wash? Well, if you've got all this uh, unspent CO2 in your wash, what could happen is that it could foam up while it's actually in your your boiler. Uh, it can create lots of foam, and if you're not careful, that could then get too much, and it will then go up your column, uh, whether it's reflux or you're using pot still, and it could basically block everything up and then you've got to stop it, strip it down, clean it, reload it, run it again and it's just going to waste your time and not be a fun, fun experience. Now it, by putting a um, d uh, like an oil based something be that butter or uh, orange, sorry butter margarine or an oil like vegetable oil, coconut oil, uh, some sort of cooking oil base in with the wash that should help it to help neutralize those bu uh, bubbles by creating a surface layer and breaking things up. So that can then get rid of it. So you could say, well, I don't need to degas then if I put a knob of butter in my side. Uh, and cool, carry on. If it works for you, carry on. Some people say you've got to degas. Now, um, that then falls into a secondary thing of should you add finings. Now, for myself, even when I'm making a neutral vodka or neutral spirit to make a vodka or a gin or something, um, I want to uh, degas it, uh, and I will, and then I'll want to add finings to be able to clear my wash. A lot of people don't care. They will literally get a wash that's finished fermenting. They will rack it off to get rid of the sediment, but they'll rack it off directly into their, their boiler, and they'll run it. And great, if, if it works for you, again, do it. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but if you're making a neutral vodka, for my, my thoughts, if I'm making neutral vodka, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on my my reflux column, same sort of thing as if I'm going out uh, and I go on an obstacle course covered in mud, do I throw my clothes into the washing machine with blocks of mud still on my clothes, knowing the washing machine will clear it up? Or would I take it outside and try and brush as much mud off as I can to put less stress on the washing machine? And that's how I feel about my boiler. Um, if I can degas it and also then add finings in to make it a cleaner, clearer wash, that puts a lot less pressure on my reflux column to be able to have to strip all that that grime, dirt, and gunk, and everything else off, uh, and it just makes it a lot easier. Um, it's not about how much, uh, how often I want to clean the reflux column. It's more just the fact that that's how I like to do it. Now, I'm not saying that's what you should do. Again, try it with, try it without, see what works for you. But to get to the point, then if you do want to degas a wash, how do you degas a wash, and also how long should you be doing it? Now, there are two main ways that people do it. The first one is with your mixing spoon, paddle, whatever you want to call it, getting it into the barrel and just constantly mixing it. Go one direction, go the other. All the wash will get between the little holes in the, the, the paddle or the spoon, and that will then help uh, uh, get the, the, the CO2 particles to knock to each other themselves and get lighter and then raise up to the top. Um, and you just do that for a while. Uh, a lot of people do this, they love it, and I think it's great. Me, personally, I don't think it agitates the wash as much as I would like. Um, plus, it's probably going to knock my arm out. Lazy, call it. So, the way I do it, and a lot of other people do it, is with a degassing wand or degassing tool. 
Now this is usually a, just a steel bar that goes into your electric drill and then you spin it. Now mine has some PTFE bits of plastic on there, some are steel, they can be rigid. When I move it, as you can see, they go up. Same as if it's down, spin it, move up. That's simple. So then I will put this on my electric drill, pull it, put it on, uh, not necessarily full power, but I'll spin up your wash, my wash, and that will help agitate it, get all those things banging together so that, again, the CO2 gets large, raise it up at the top. So here we are. Here's my tomato wash, tomato paste wash. Here's my drilling bit, and you can see how it works. Now, what I'd recommend is don't put it on full speed, get a vortex. That's all you're going to be doing is you're mixing more bubbles in. Now, when you do this, you're always going to get bubbles, some from the CO2 coming out, as well as you're mixing in bubbles. Don't worry about it too much. So I'm just going to do this for 10 seconds and give it a bit of a stop. There we go, it's 10 seconds. Now you can see the colors changed. The reason why the colors change is that's the uh, CO2 bouncing together, creating larger bubbles, raising to the top, as well as air being pulled into the wash as it's spinning and getting mixed up. So this isn't all CO2 that's escaping. This is me re-injecting oxygen by the nature of it moving. Now, if you create a vortex, more air is going to get in, you're going to get more bubbles. So it'll look like that you're releasing more CO2. You could keep doing it, keep doing it, saying there's too much air in here, I can't get it out. Um, but you're not, you're actually injecting air, which makes it look like CO2. Now I'm going to show you what that's like. But before I do, and while you won't necessarily see properly, but the bubbles that it created are dissipating quite quickly. And that's how I personally know that's air, that is not CO2. Now I've already degassed this, to be honest. Um, I did it earlier. So this is done. But if it was a CO2 that was escaping, it would stay on the surface for a lot longer and you get a whole white film all over the top. So this is how I know this is done because the bubbles are leaving quite quickly and not staying around forever. Now let's create a vortex. That's, you don't want to do that. That will be injecting a lot of oxygen inside that brew, and there's no point for it. And if I try and stop that from swirling, you can see a lot more bubbles. Now, there are a lot bigger bubbles, though. While you do have around here small bubbles, uh, it will look more like a foam, a little bit like in the middle here, but it'll be a lot smaller bubbles, and they will be sticking on a, a big layer all the way around, and they will take a long time to go away. Whereas again here, you can see everything's dissipating, bursting. It's going away quite quickly, which is why I know that's uh, air rather that I'm injecting rather than CO2 that's escaping from it. And the other thing you can do, tell the, <coughs> oh, me, tell the drill to rotate in the opposite direction. There we go, stop it before it gets to be a vortex. And I'm gonna turn it now the other direction. You can see no bubbles are coming up whatsoever. And the other good idea is to lower this as far as you can down to the bottom. Don't keep it near the top because then again, you're going to be exciting too much. You're going to be mixing more air in to try and keep your drill as low as you can to the bottom. All right. Well, that's me done. I hope you found this uh, helpful and um, see you on next video. <laughs>